This hacker rank problem is a very interesting one. In many areas in our software engineering, programming, data science endeavors, we will face times that we will have to deal with time. Time and date and a lot of different things that we really need to deal with can be really summarized in this problem. Stay tuned. With my series of hacker rank solutions, I am at number 39, which is called time delta. That's a medium level of difficulty. So I will do my best to explain it as easy as possible. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead. That really helps me to grow my audience. So let's go ahead and open this challenge from hacker rank. Like always, if you've seen my previous videos, I'll have a Jupyter notebook on the right side of my screen. And on the left side, I've got my hacker rank platform. This is the task that we have been introduced with. I'm not going to really read every single line of it. I'll just jump straight into my own words explanation of this task. The task is the user needs to understand the time difference between two points in time. Say, for example, for some reason, the user wants to understand the difference between today and five days from now in number of seconds. So the output essentially is the number of seconds for two given time points. So we will ask the user how many sets of times are they going to provide? So in this very example from HackerRank, they will provide two sets of time. So this is the first set and this is the second set. So as you can imagine, we need to ask first question, how many different sets do you have? That will be the first number. Then that will be followed by two entries per set. So if the user says two sets, they will enter four date and time for us to calculate two and two, two for each set. Here's the task. We will ask the user, how many date sets they have. In this example, they have two date sets. So then for each date set, we will have two entries. This is set number one I have highlighted on the screen, and this is set number two. For each set, we will find the difference between the beginning and the end of that time. So let's get into it. HackerRank has already provided a bit of the context for us for coding. So let me quickly read through what we have and what we need to produce. We will need to import these libraries because we will do some math. We will do some operating system path setting and some random number generation and such and such. The only bit for you and I to complete is this function, which is called time underscore delta. We will receive a beginning and an end for some date range, and we will calculate how many seconds exist there, which needs to go into this function. So let me just make a comment. We need to complete here. Now, what I will do quickly, I will copy and paste all of this into my Jupyter notebook. As a quick reminder, every time you need to deal with time and date, there is one very popular library in Python that we use, and that is the date time library. So there is one very important line that I need to add, and that is from date time, import date time and time delta. These two functions are fundamental for this problem solution. Let me just open another cell because I want to keep my code a bit cleaner. So I will paste them here, import them, make sure there is no problem. Once you have imported them, we will start working with this function. But before I go through what the function needs to look like, I need to understand what date and time format I need to provide. So when I look at this one as an example, I can see that the user needs to enter the day of the week, then the day of the month, the month itself, the year, and the time in very specific order. The format for this in the daytime library is as follows. Let me move this a bit down, and I will write a new variable, which is called the date format, and I will put exactly that date format in the problem into 
the date format in datetime library. Here is the format. The percent sign and letter A stands for day of the week. This one is day of the month. This one is for the month and the year. This capital Y is for the actual year. And the rest of that is for hours, minutes, and seconds. And then this last one is for the time zone. That's exactly what I have been provided in the task. Now that I have the date format set, let's see how the user will interact with this application. I'm going to look at the main function down the bottom. You can ignore this bit for now. I will get back to it in a second. But here is where the user says how many different sets of dates they want to provide. So that's exactly where, in this example, number two will be received. So this is for the number of sets. Then in a for loop, we will continue receiving date points from the user. So the first entry, which is the beginning of a set, goes into T1. For example, this line will go into T1. And then the second, which is the end of that point, goes into T2, which will be this line. So in each for loop iteration, I will receive two dates, which is great. Now, all I need to do is to find the time delta between T1 and T2 provided by the user. So let me go back to my function. In the function, I need to convert T1 from a string into a date format. Because as you can imagine, if the user provides me any details like this, it will be saved as a string. I can't really deal with a string and find a time difference. I need to convert it to a date format. So what I will do, I will use the date time library, the strp time function, feed t1 into it and ask it to convert it to the date format I have provided. I will do exactly the same for t2. So time2 equals date time, strp time for t2 and again same date format rest of this should be pretty easy i have two time objects i just need to find a time delta so let's call it time difference equals time one subtract time two but is this what i want not really because i want to convert it to seconds the task asks me the difference in seconds so once you have time one subtract time two what you need to do is to go ahead and say, I want the total, not there, outside there, the total seconds. That will give me the total seconds. I need to convert that into an integer, which will convert everything into an integer. And I need to find the absolute value because I don't want any negative. I want everything to be positive because maybe the user provides the date as tomorrow minus yesterday. That will be negative time, so I need to take the absolute value. Once I have done that, I will return the string of time difference. Okay, now let me move back to the code below provided by HackerRank themselves. So as we said, we asked the user how many different sets they have. They will provide the different dates, which we have used. We will find the delta using this function. So the function should be okay now. We will just use this function, which is exactly what I built, which will give the delta, and this will be written out. But now, let me get back to this point. What does this line really mean? The summary is, any platform that asks you to do some coding on their website, and then they check your output, in the back end, they kind of write that code into a folder, if you like. It's not really a folder, but when you are provided by a platform and you write your code and HackerRank checks your code, that gets written into their systems before they can process it. So this line up the top here and these two lines down the bottom are for that purpose. You can simply ignore them but if I run them on my Jupyter Notebook, it will not run because we don't have any output path defined for our bit. So if you wanna run this code on your machine, 
you will need to comment out that line and comment out these two lines. Otherwise, you will get an error. Let me just undo that and run it and you will see that I will get an error. And you can see that JupyterLab is complaining that there is no output path. So that was expected. What I will do, I'll comment that one out. I'll comment that one out. And if I run it now, you can see that it is asking me for input. So let's just try this code. I will provide you with two sets of dates. I'm just copying from HackerRank here. Copy that. Paste that. I think I need to print the result. Let me quickly copy that one as well. Yeah, I will have to print the result. So what I will do down here, I will add a line and say print delta. Let's run that again. Two sets. Copy this one. Copy that one. Yep, I can see that 25,200 has been printed, which is exactly this value. Let me just move my face. And then if I copy that one, paste and paste, you can see that 88,200 is also correct. So what I will do now, I will copy all of that. I don't really need to copy all of that. I will just copy this function up here, paste it here. And I will run the code to see if it runs successfully. Let me move my face. I forgot to import these libraries on HackerRank. So let me just go ahead and import the libraries. Run the code again. Congratulations. So it did run with one test case. If I submit the code, it will run multiple test cases. They are all successful. And this has been successful. Congrats, Amir, you just solved all the date and time challenges in Python. Thank you very much. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment for me. Let me know what you think and let me know what type of other videos would you like to see. More than happy to do that. Thank you very much.